coronavirus. The coronavirus. 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 The coronavirus. Panic. How do we deal with the things we cannot control? From big box warehouses to neighborhood drugstores, Americans are preparing for a pandemic. <laughs> The first thing in the response is there has to be a shift in mindsets. Um, again, around the world, people are thinking, oh gosh, how do we live with this? For me, at the start of quarantine, my life turned completely upside down. I went from kind of living on my own in my own apartment at SoCal and then having to move back home with my parents and have and revert back to my life that I wanted to leave by going to CSUN, which was just having nothing to do, nowhere to go. And it just felt so, I thought I could handle it because that was what I was used to. And then slowly and surely I realized how much it would take a toll on me. My life has been limited by the pandemic. Like it just transformed my life altogether where it's like the life I knew before no longer exists. There was really no ending or um, no closure. I worked on campus, so I lost my job. Um, and then I had to move because I lived on campus too. I mean, I'm like coping, but I'm like not coping. I'm like coping as far as like, I'm making do with what I have, but I'm not coping. It's like, I get way less sleep. Um, my anxiety is a little bit worse than it used to be. Um, just thinking about the future and thinking about um, how things are gonna be changing from here on out. So coronavirus is a massive story. Should we be panicking? Fear. Is this preparation or paranoia? The virus continues to spread and so is public fear. Anger. You literally cannot mandate somebody to wear a mask knowing that that mask is killing people. You're not God and since masks are harmful, where there is risk, there should be choice. You're removing our freedoms and stomping on our con constitutional rights by these communist dictatorship orders or laws you want to mandate. How did they come up with this number of six feet? I think they just pulled it out of their rear end. Denial. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. It's one person coming in from China. The cycle that we're doing is not stopping anything. It's not preventing the spread. Locking down doesn't work. Healthy people aren't dying. We're just getting over it like the flu. Do you see this like the flu? I see it like the flu. That's exactly what it is. It's a different type of flu. So what are you saying to the scientists and those who encourage you to keep apart and wear a mask? Uh, they're fear mongers because they don't know. At times it can feel like the end of the world with little hope that we can survive and get to the other side. Except we have survived. This isn't something new. Some might call it deja vu. Because in a sense, we've seen this all before. The Spanish flu of 1918. Scientists still don't know where the Spanish flu originated. Roughly around May, April, May 1918, when, you know, the carnage of the First World War is, is graphic and horrendous. But at the same time, this, this unknown enemy is starting to sweep through the US, Europe, the trenches. And it is recorded by the Spanish press, uh, and it becomes dubbed as the Spanish flu. the first known case was reported at Fort Riley, Kansas. 
on March 11, 1918. Some believe that infected soldiers spread the disease to other military camps across the country, then brought it overseas. The death toll attributed to the Spanish flu is often estimated at 20 to 50 million victims. The exact number is unknown due to the lack of medical record keeping in many places. And by summer of 1919, the flu came to an end. Those that were infected either died or developed an immunity. But rest assured, COVID versus the Spanish flu. History repeats itself. We've seen it time and time again. COVID-19 has disrupted American life on an unthinkable scale, just like another pandemic a century ago. If you were flung back in time 100 years, uh, I think you'd be very surprised at the similarities. The Spanish flu took a heavy human toll and was detrimental to the economy. With COVID-19, the same is happening now. As Minnesota Historical Society Research Director Bill Convery points out, local governments in Minnesota banned gatherings in the fall of 1918 and launched urgent public health campaigns. Avoiding contact with other people, maintaining social distancing, all of these were uh, recommendations. During the Spanish flu, some communities were forced by officials to quarantine. Citizens were required to wear masks, Schools, churches, and theaters were shut down. People were told to avoid shaking hands, avoid contact with others in general. And although most people wore masks, because they were told to, some didn't. And out of this came the anti-maskers. In Minnesota, they also strongly recommended gauze masks. The Red Cross handed them out and many wore them, including workers at the World War I draft board. But masks weren't required here. At the time, there wasn't a uh, across-the-board recommendation from on high for what should happen. While researching Minnesota's flu pandemic response for the Department of Health almost 15 years ago, Miles Ott found a patchwork of rules. The head of the Minnesota Health Board, for example, didn't even wear a mask himself, saying, quote, I prefer to take my chances. All of this may sound familiar, because the same thing is happening now. All right, hit it. All right, we're tired of shopping with masks on, and now we're waiting for the masks off because we're done with it. My name is Butch, and I'm an American patriot. See that flag? I would die for that flag. The Constitution that you are supposed to uphold? I would die for that. Politics may be getting in the way of safety. I mean, I feel very strongly about masks. I think that they're very essential. I think that they're necessary in order to slow this thing down. It's not really any skin off your back to wear a mask. Um, and if you don't wear a mask, I think you're irresponsible or ignorant or both. And it's really that simple to me. If someone's not wearing a mask, I just give them a wide berth and let them, let them have their space, I say. Give them, give them all the space they need. I think masks are necessary. Like, we have scientists who devote their whole careers to, tr like, for the betterment of people and to try and keep us safe. I think in the beginning of quarantine, I actually went to the grocery store a lot. Um, I would literally walk around my house and like ask people, is our fridge looking a little light or do you need anything from Vons? Um, and then as it went on, I just kind of tried to make myself busy. I watch way too much Netflix more than I usually would. Um, basically watching the same show like three times. Like I've watched Outer Banks three times and I couldn't tell you why. I have just been really trying to con to continue aspects of my life that I can still continue. 
that were around before the pandemic began. And I've kind of just been focusing on, I don't know, practicing my craft, be the screenwriter I'm meant to be or something. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I was always kind of a bit of a homebody. So I really, when this hit, the main change for me personally uh, was everything academically related. Uh, so I feel like, honestly, like my experience was very different from a lot of other people. Like I didn't even like move back home because I had been commuting to school the whole time. I don't think my coping was as significant as a lot of other people um, were. It didn't really change too much. So it, it pushed me more to talk to the friends I had, make new friends, and actually go out and pursue counseling because of how I was feeling. So it started from falling back to old habits and old ways and then finding new ways to improve as time went on. Uh, what I miss the most is like having a, a schedule. I know before quarantine was day by day, I kind of had I had my rituals, I had all my traditions. I would get in my car, turn on a podcast, I would speed. Um, but now that's all gone. And and I, I'm trying to find new traditions and rituals. I went to a music festival a few months before COVID shut down. And I didn't realize that would be like one of the last like good memories I'd have before all of this. So you don't know the value of sweaty stoners throwing you around in a pit until it's ripped away from you very blatantly. So I really miss concerts. That's one of the things I miss the most. We're all stuck at home and like you can't ignore it anymore. Like it's right in front of you, um, all the injustices that are happening right now and you know, political stuff and all that, I just feel like it gives people more time to really reflect on how they want the future to be. And um, I feel like that's a good thing for our generation. The mishandling of this pandemic was the last straw for a lot of people. And I think that the amount of participation in um, our country's democracy is going to increase because of this. Um, it already has started increasing, um, but I think it's, I think this is going to change how people view presidential elections and how they view um, state government. And I mean, the impact that poor management can have on everyone's life. So I don't know, I feel like I'm a little more informed now because of COVID and maybe it's just because I, I, I didn't have anything else to do but sit around and be tuned in to the, to the state of the world. Yeah, I've actually made a lot of friends um, that I didn't think I would from COVID and I've talked to a lot of people that I don't know if I would have kept in contact with them the same way. Yeah, I would say the one good thing about that came out of this is this, both on a personal level and on a societal level, this reevaluation of our lives and how things are, are moving forward. I, I know that with all the hardship that everyone has faced on both levels and having to readjust, people are uh, really, you know, thinking about what they're doing, thinking about their plans, their beliefs, uh, they're, they're adapting in both in ways that are temporary, but ways that change, will forever change them as people. Uh, you know, like they felt like things were completely upended. Uh, they didn't really know what to do, regardless of how big or small the changes to their own lives were. And it, it's through this that I think we're going to see a lot of personal growth. I think uh, and I think we're gonna like, we're not gonna, whatever happens next, we're not gonna move backwards. Everyone has gained this new sense of empathy because we're all collectively going through 
this pandemic together. And I think that's a really good thing that has come out of this and just really understanding each other. If, you, if you're thinking about doing something, just do it. Um, I think I've learned at this time that um, there are people who are losing family members all the time. There are people who can't see their friends. There are people who can't do a lot of things because of this virus. And I just think that in the future, like if you want to do something, do it. If you are holding a grudge with somebody, don't. Like just don't hold a grudge because you never know what's going to happen. Life can change so fast. For us, it changed in an instant. So I just feel like um, just do whatever your heart desires. I'm hoping that the way that society is altered from this will make us a little more caring and respectful towards each other and think about how our actions affect those around us. I hope that maybe our generation would impart that lesson of appreciating what you have as you have it. Um, I know looking back, and especially when this is over, I'm gonna be much more grateful for everything that I have and everyone that I'm around and what I can do in life. And I hope I hope that lesson can be passed on. I think there's gonna, even if future generations kind of see the pandemic as just a chapter in a history book that they don't read or points in a lecture that they fall asleep to, I still feel that hopefully there are gonna be things in society that are gonna be changed because of this pandemic. I hope that future generations learn to adapt to events that are unpredictable, just because I know for a fact that a lot of us weren't ready or were even expecting a pandemic, especially for it to be lasting uh, as long as it has. So hopefully people are more prepared in the future knowing uh, what precautions to take in case of anything like that happens ever again. I think people taking all of these new precautions and knowing how to uh, prepare for the future is like the most important thing right now. And I think that having this uh, happen right now is, is something that has kind of shooken people to their core. And I hope that people really learn to take care of themselves and others from it.